John chapter 5, verse 25, and we'll read through to verse 29. John 5, 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is. As the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good things unto resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. And we do ask God to bless that word to us. So we're here again tonight to pray for revival, to cry to God that he would do a work in our lives, in the church and in the, the land that we love. And thinking about that earlier on in the week, um, reading this, this passage, it seemed to lend itself to what we will do tonight to be praying for revival. Because here in these few verses, um, Jesus is in conversation with the Jewish religious experts, the Jewish religious leaders. And he tells them something. In verse 28 first, he says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming. That's filled with anticipation. He wants them to understand that something is going to happen. Uh, they don't know of it now, but it's coming. The hour is coming or the day is coming. And this coming day will be the day when the dead will hear the voice of Christ, the physically dead. There's coming a day, Jesus says, when my voice will reach to the grave, he says, the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, the voice of the Son of Man, the Son of God. There's going to be such an incredible sound coming from the risen Christ, a sound that's going to be a grave-shattering sound. His voice is going to crack open the graves. One chap said to me a long time ago, where do you want to be when the, the Lord returns? And uh, I was only a young Christian, so I didn't really understand what he was talking about. He said, I want to be in a graveyard. And I'm thinking, you want to be dead? What he meant was, I want to be in the graveyard, standing in the graveyard to see the graves open and the dead rising. What a day that would be. That the, the sound of the voice of the risen Christ would break open the, 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 the graves and the, those that have been held captive there, released, and they come up. That's what he says is going to happen. That's what he's saying to these uh, religious leaders. But he says that those who end their lives without Christ, therefore those who end their lives in sin, they too will be raised. But they'll be raised to damnation. That, that language is really, really strong. It's not language that we like to use and it's not language that we should use lightly either we shouldn't be treating that kind of idea or thought flippantly and i know sometimes you've heard that being done but even the even the most wicked person who is going to be raised because their grave is going to be broken open by the sound of the voice of christ and they're going to rise up 
But even the most wicked person, it's not a, it's not a pleasant thought for any of us to think that they will be rising up to eternal judgment. <coughs> Never to be relieved It might be a nice thought in our hearts or in our minds at times when we think of the most wicked people um, and we think that they haven't escaped the judgment of God. But to think of that day when the graves are broken open and up they rise to be eternally condemned, eternal damnation, that is such a heavy thought. And it doesn't just apply to the most wicked, of course, it applies to any who have died without Christ. And I'm standing here saying that, knowing that there are members of my family who have died without Christ. And when the graves are broken open by the voice of my Saviour, they will be raised up to that. Oh, but we can't dwell on that too much, can we? We've got to be aware of the truth, but we can't dwell on that. Jesus said that those who die in Christ, those who do good, he says, they will be raised to the resurrection of life. They will be raised up into an eternal salvation. Isn't that a thrill? Now we can dwell on that. We can think about that. We can marvel at that. That when the day comes, our loved ones who have gone before us in Christ. When the day dawns and the voice of Jesus blasts out this life-giving force, their graves will be open and they will be raised and they will enjoy an eternal salvation with the Lord. That is a marvelous thought. That is something that really should excite us. Because as Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 9, we are not appointed unto wrath, but unto salvation. And so, if you're in that graveyard, when the sound of the, the voice of the, the Savior rings out and the graves open and your loved ones rise up. What a joy! Because you see, very shortly after that, we are going to join them in the air. What a thought that the, the physically dead will be physically raised and those who, who rise in Christ will, will rise up into the, the reality of that spiritual truth. Eternal salvation in Jesus Christ. It's going to be a great day to see those who move from, who have already moved from death to life, entering into the full experience of that. What a day it will be when the Lord Jesus Christ returns, when the dead in Christ shall rise and meet the Lord in the air. That's going to be a day that we couldn't explain if it wasn't in the scriptures. First Thessalonians chapter 4. This beautiful picture. The sound first the tearing open, of, open of, of heaven, and down comes the Lord. In chapter 4, verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and the voice with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's beautiful. So here comes the sound of Christ returning. The sound of this beautiful but massive voice. The graves breaking open, the dead in Christ rising. But first, those of us, says Paul, who are left, those of us who are alive, we will be raised up to meet them, to be with them and to forever be with the Lord. 
That's why when we think of the return of, of Christ as Christians, it thrills us. We mustn't think that he's dead and, and remote and remaining apart from us. It thrills me to think that the day is coming when Christ is coming back for me. That Christ is coming back to raise up my mother and my grandmother and, and whoever else has gone before me in the Lord. What a thrill that is. What a sound it's going to be. Oh, the world isn't going to be able to understand this. When the graveyards are emptied, it should excite us. Because on that day, if you turn to Isaiah chapter 29, on that day when Jesus returns, Isaiah 25, I beg your pardon, and verse 9, when he comes back, this is what we'll be saying. In that day, this is what we'll say. Lo, this is our God. We've just heard his voice. Here he comes. Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. Praise the Lord. And he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. That's what I long to say. That's going to be the day when we all sing together. This is our God. This is our God. We're going to be able to marvel at the greatness of who he is. And along with Paul, we'll be saying, Maranatha. We'll be saying, our Lord has come. And along with the Apostle John, when we come to pray tonight, aren't we praying along with John at the end of Revelation, even so come, Lord Jesus. Even so come, Lord Jesus. What a date will be when he, he comes out of heaven. What a date will be when the voice of Christ shatters the graves and there's a resurrection. But he says something else to the Pharisees or the religious leaders in our passage. Uh, something that happens before this great resurrection experience. He says in verse 25, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is come, or the hour is coming and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. He's not talking there about those who are physically dead and in their graves. He's talking there about those who are walking around and they're spiritually dead. He's talking about the people who are living their lives at this moment without Christ, and maybe you've got members of your family that are walking around just like members of my family who are dead spiritually. They're dead in their sins. They have no sense of Jesus Christ at all. Well, Jesus says the day is coming, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. And those who hear it will live. That's what we long for tonight. Jesus is speaking of the spiritually dead in the here and now, hearing his life-giving voice. Aren't you glad for the moment that the voice of Jesus Christ spoke life into your heart? Aren't you glad that when you were spiritually dead, he raised you up by speaking to your heart? That's how much he loves you. That's how much God cares for us because you see God doesn't leave it to you and to me to make ourselves alive how can a dead person make themselves alive but the voice of Christ speaking into the heart of the spiritually dead and bang let there be light and there is light that life begins as Christ speaks. I have people in my family tonight that I long for God to speak to. I long for the voice of Christ to bring them to life. Isn't that what revival is? When the voice of Christ 
speaks to the hearts of individuals, speaks to the hearts of the sleepy church and reawakens us, speaks to the heart of those who are spiritually dead, brings us to life. That's revival. Oh, don't we long for that? On, on Saturday, as the, the church is out there represented by faithful servants to preach the gospel, isn't it, isn't it true that what we need is for the voice of Christ to break in, to, as he smashes the graves, that he would smash the hard heart and bring that heart to life? Because you see, when Jesus Christ speaks to a dead heart, the only thing that dead heart can do is get up. What happened to Lazarus on a physical level happens to us on a spiritual level. When the voice of Christ says, Lazarus, come forth. I was in a lay-by in Larbert when the voice of Christ said to me, Crawford, come forth. Hallelujah. Where were you? Where were you? You know where you were. Doesn't it thrill you that at that moment you might not have been really interested or you might have heard the gospel, but you weren't over the line and then the voice of the Savior speaks to you. It's your turn. Come forth. The voice of life spoken into a hard and dead heart. Hallelujah. That's what we need tonight. We long to hear or have people hear. The spiritually dead hearing the voice of Jesus saying, repent. Repent and live. That's what he says in Ezekiel. That's what Ezekiel 20, uh, 18 to 32 says. Repent and live. He says in Mark, repent and believe the gospel. Repent and believe. That's Christ speaking life. Christ saying, seek me and live. You see, we can say these words and it doesn't really matter to anybody. You've been in places where the gospel has been clearly preached and there have been unbelievers there and they go home untouched by what you've said in your witness or in your preaching. Don't beat yourself up. Don't for one minute think you've failed. You know what has... What hasn't happened? What hasn't happened is Christ hasn't spoken to that heart. Because I'll tell you, the minute Christ speaks to that heart, it happens. It's over. The struggle's over. When Christ says, come forth, that's it, done. You come forth. That's the effectual call, isn't it? That's what the effectual call is. The command of the gospel is belief. But when Christ speaks to a person's heart, saying that same thing, believe, he gives the person, he gives that person the ability to believe. In the call, he gives the ability. What a savior. Seek me and live. Well, that soul can only do one thing. Seek him and live. And so we pray tonight for revival. We pray that God would speak, that Christ would break into a person's heart and tell them to believe in him. Tell them that the cross was for them. Tell them that the blood that he shed, he shed for them and that they need to take hold of that because in telling them that, he is also giving them the ability to do it. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus said, the day, the day is coming, and now is. How does that make us feel tonight? It's here. This is the day of salvation. It's here. It's now. It's, Jesus is saying, 
we can enter into this experience of seeing people being brought to life by the voice of Jesus. It's not something that used to happen. It's not something that is simply a day coming, but it's something that we can experience today as we faithfully serve Jesus Christ and ask him to use us to tell the world who needs to hear it. Seek me and live. Repent and live. Repent and believe the good news. There's going to be, before the resurrection experience, there's going to be an in-gathering of souls. That's what Jesus is saying. The day is now here. The dead are going to hear my voice. They're going to live. And then there's going to be a resurrection day when those in the grave will hear my voice and rise. So we can get involved and, and, and we can pray for this and we can faithfully serve in, in order that this will happen, this great in-gathering. I don't know, but I'm delighted about that. And it delights me tonight that I can stand there and pray and ask God to do this in people I have never seen or imagined existed. I can pray, we can pray tonight and ask God to speak to hearts that we don't even know. There is a whole community, communities around the church in this area. We haven't seen them. We don't know them. But here, here's the thing, we don't need to see them. We don't need to know them. Yes, we want to be brought into contact with them. But that's not, a, that's not the prerequisite. The prerequisite is Christ speaks to the heart and brings them to an awareness of himself. If he's going to use us to do it on a physical level, so be it, how wonderful. But wouldn't it be just as wonderful to see, as we said before, to see them coming in? Not knowing why, but because God has spoken to them. One chap came into Wesley Owen. I used to work in Wesley Owen many years ago. And this chap came in asking for a Bible. And he was, he was actually quite, he was quite ashen. And I asked him if he was okay. And he said, ah, I'm, I'm fine. He said, I just got off the train. He says, and I just felt as if somebody was pushing me into the shop. He said, I, I, I can I get a Bible? So I, I took him to where the Bibles were. He got a Bible. And his whole complexion just changed. His whole face changed. And he, I don't know how it worked out with him. He didn't want to talk about it anymore. He took the Bible and went out the, out the, the, the shop. I pray that he's in the kingdom. But I'm, I'm thinking... He didn't know what brought him into the shop. It was Christ. It was Christ speaking to his heart while he was on the train. That when you go off this train, you come out of Central Station, you turn left and you go onto Bothable Street and just up the street on the right-hand side, there's a bookshop and you have to go into that bookshop. Hallelujah! Well, if God can do that with some guy from, a, 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 it might even have been Ayrshire, I don't know where he was coming from, but if God can do that with some guy on a train in Glasgow Central Station, my goodness me, God can speak to the hearts of the people around about this church and open them up and tell them, see that church that you've passed for so many years? See that church at the corner of the street? I want you to go in there because you see, when he comes in here or when she comes in here, we know that they will hear the gospel. And our prayer is that as they hear the gospel, that they would hear it with the voice of Christ. So let's pray tonight and ask the Lord to fulfill these verses that the day is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of Christ. We say, Lord, plant your soul in the souls of men. Speak, Lord Jesus, and bring the dead to life.
Father, we thank you for your love towards us, and we thank you for the gospel. But we do pray, Father, that the voice of Jesus would be heard every time we speak, every time we proclaim the truth, that the voice of Christ would plant it in the heart. So bring them to life. Bring them to life in numbers, Father. Use us in that work if it pleases you to do so, because we make ourselves available in this place for that very thing. But Lord, be glorified in those you bring in. Make us marvel at the greatness and the power and the life in the voice of our Savior. In Jesus we pray. Amen.